the quorum call be dispensed with? Without objection. Madam President, January is National Human Trafficking Prevention Month, and it's a great opportunity to improve awareness about the scourge of human trafficking and to redouble our efforts to end it. Throughout my career, I've worked with law enforcement, nonprofits, and advocates of all stripes to try to crack down on human trafficking and strengthen support for human trafficking survivors. These experts have helped me identify steps that we together can take in Congress to end modern slavery. And I'm proud of one of those bill, that one of those bills was signed into law earlier this month. The Abolish Human Trafficking Reauthorization Act, which I introduced with Senator Klobuchar, the senator from Minnesota, is officially the law of the land. This law extends critical support to survivors of human trafficking, provides resources for law enforcement, funds prevention research, and promotes increased reporting to prevent human trafficking. It's a step in the right direction in our fight to end modern slavery, and I was glad to discuss the importance of this law with advocates and experts in Texas just a couple of weeks ago. On January the 11th, National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, I had the pleasure of sitting down with some remarkable people in Dallas who were leading the fight. We gathered at the Latot Residential Treatment Center, which provides a full range of services to human trafficking survivors, specifically girls between the age of 13 and 17. Latot offers safe shelter, which I've learned is perhaps the most important thing, a safe place for these survivors to actually live, but it also provides education, job training, and mental health care to these young victims to help them find a clear path forward one day at a time. I had visited the same facility a few years ago to learn about the work they do, and I was encouraged to note their continued impact in Dallas County, one of our largest counties in Texas. I also learned about the dedicated work of New Friends, New Life, which helps exploited girls, women, and their children to rebuild their lives and to move forward toward a brighter future. The organization also promotes a men's advocacy group, which raises awareness and mobilizes men to take action against sex trafficking and exploitation. In addition to learning more about the impact of these organizations, I was able to hear from local law enforcement, including Dallas District Attorney John Cruzeau. John noted that Texas is number two in the nation when it comes to human trafficking, and added that Dallas is a major hotspot because it is at the crossroads of so many interstate freeways. Rescuing victims of human trafficking, disrupting trafficking operations, and pursuing justice is a major focus for law enforcement. For sex trafficking in particular, they're working with groups like Traffic 911 to free young people from this terrible life. I'm blown away by the incredible work being done in North Texas to support survivors and ensure that justice is served. What I heard from these survivors really underscored how critical these efforts are. One of the women I heard from was Dr. Tanya Stafford, an inspiring and passionate advocate for survivors of human trafficking. Tonya told us that she was only 13 when her mother sold her to a man for drugs. You heard that right. When she was 13, year old, 13 years old, her own mother sold her to a man for drugs. Then for 10 years, she was hidden in plain sight until finally a neighbor intervened. As Tonya put it, she saw something, she said something, and she did something. Every single day, concerned neighbors and friends call tip lines and help victims like Tonya escape from human trafficking. Incredible organizations like the Latat Residential Treatment Center and New Friends, New Life help these 
victims of human trafficking rebuild their lives. Law enforcement and groups like Traffic 9-11 help to free victims from human trafficking. And the brave survivors are what have impressed me most, most of all. To have these survivors talk about their own personal story with all of the potential for embarrassment uh, that that, that uh, suggests speaks to me to the courage of these survivors who are willing to use their own personal example to help save others from the similar fate. It was inspiring to hear them talk about overcoming the incredible trauma and adversity. Their stories are a reminder of why it's so important for us to continue this fight. That includes everything from awareness and education to legislating here in Congress. There's no better time than Human Trafficking Prevention Month to build on these efforts. And I want to thank the experts, the advocates, and the survivors, as well as all of our Senate and congressional colleagues who are leading on this fight. Madam President, the day after my conversation with, in Dallas, I traveled to Houston, another one of our major metropolitan areas, to discuss a new law that will have a big impact on child sexual abuse victims. The seed for this legislation was first planted in September 2021 when the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing on the repeated failures of the FBI's investigation into the Larry Nassar case. USA Gymnasts delivered a powerful testimony about the FBI's mishandling of their investigation and inspired a bipartisan push to fix the broken process by which that failed them and countless other victims. Again, Senator Klobuchar and I worked with law enforcement, victims' rights groups, and all of our colleagues here in the Senate to identify reforms that would actually make a difference. Those discussions eventually led to the Respect for Child Survivors Act, which was signed into law earlier this month. This law mandates the use of multiple, dis, multiple disciplinary teams, or MDTs, in FBI interviews with child victims. Now, just by way of footnote, most of these kinds of cases are investigated at the local or state level. And frankly, most local level law enforcement has worked with the child advocacy centers around Texas and around the country to try to minimize the repetition of the trauma on these child victims and to help preserve testimony needed to convict their abuser. But the FBI has a much bigger portfolio and generally is not trained in how to deal with these victims of sexual assault, particularly child victims. So, now this new law mandates training for the FBI. Um, these MDTs, the multi multiple disciplinary teams that they will now um, work with include mental health and mental health professionals, medical professionals, excuse me, case workers and other individuals who advocate for a child's well-being. The primary goal, of course, is to protect these young victims and ensure that they are not re-traumatized during the investigation, which is going to be intrusive by its very nature. There's a mountain of evidence, thank goodness, that this approach actually works. During the discussion in Houston, I sat down with a full range of experts on this topic at the Children's Assessment Center, which is a pioneer in the successful use of MDTs. For more than 30 years, it has cared for sexually abused children and in the process established the gold standard for the right way to protect victims of child sexual abuse. The folks I spoke with and listened to that day stressed the importance of this approach. For example, Houston Police Lieutenant John Colburn said the partnership between law enforcement and the Children's Assessment Center makes a tremendous difference. He said children are able to share their experiences in a more comfortable way, and law enforcement can take peace in the knowledge that these incredibly difficult conversations are happening with trauma-informed experts who are equipped 
to handle them properly. That's why this legislation is important. One of the individuals we heard from was Rebecca Whitehurst, a former USA gymnast and one of the hundreds of survivors of the Larry Nassar episode. She said, it's deeply gratifying to know that you've listened to our voices and learned from our experience to ensure that systems improve and that justice is served. Rebecca concluded her comments by saying, children should be totally protected from those who would harm them, and those who would fail them should be held accountable. I couldn't say it better myself. With this new law in the books, I'm confident the FBI will be better prepared to handle similar investigations in the future with compassion and efficiency, and ultimately bring perpetrators to justice. This was all possible because of the brave gymnasts who testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee a year and a half ago. They showed tremendous courage by speaking out, by talking about personal intimate matters that were necessarily embarrassing to them, but they overcame that knowing that they could well make a difference for some future gymnast or some other child sexual assault victim in the future. I hope they'll take some comfort in knowing that their stories brought about this change. We need to ensure that the FBI's mistreatment of these victims and their reports is not repeated in the future, and this law will help make sure that goal is accomplished. Like so many of us, we learn from our constituents, we learn from men and women who take the time to share their experiences with us, and I'm grateful to those who did so in Dallas and Houston, and again, especially the survivors. They're doing incredible work to root out human trafficking and support survivors and ensure that justice is served. I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish last Congress to strengthen their efforts, but there's still more work for us to do. I appreciate all of our colleagues on both sides of the aisle and both sides of the Capitol who've worked together to, on these efforts in the past, and I'm eager to accomplish even more this Congress. Madam President, I, Mr. President, excuse me, pardon me, uh, I would yield the floor and I'd note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.